Welcome to the fourth lecture of Buddhism for Beginners by Buddhaland, a straightforward explanation of Buddhism. Let's start. The Noble Eightfold Path. Buddhist teachings are a formula described in simple steps and include physical and mental treatment for ridding a person of suffering. Like all Buddhist teachings, this formula, called the Noble Eightfold Path, can only work if a person chooses to apply it to their lives and take full responsibility for following the steps. The Noble Eightfold Path is as follows. The right understanding, the right thought, the right speech, the right action, the right livelihood, the right effort, the right mindfulness, the right concentration. The Noble Eightfold Path is eight areas of practice that touch all aspects of life. Although they are numbered from one to eight, they are not to be mastered one at a time, but practiced all at once. Every aspect of the path supports and reinforces every other part. What is the right understanding? The right understanding is an insight into the nature of things as they are. In particular, insight into the first three noble truths, the nature of suffering, the cause of suffering, the cessation of suffering. Right view is the understanding of things as they are. The Buddha points out that we need to reflect on what we think because thoughts lead to actions. He reminds us wrong understanding leads to wrong decisions, and wrong choices lead to false speech and action, and so on until we reach wrong outcomes. Right Thought The second precept of the Eightfold Path that we will cover is Right Thought. Buddha taught us that our thoughts and intentions are compelling. They determine our mental states, such as happiness or sadness, and our actions. There are three classic stages to right thought and intention. First, becoming aware of our thinking process. Second, letting go of negative thought patterns. And third, cultivating goodwill. As we investigate our thoughts, we can ask ourselves the following questions. Are these thoughts benefiting me and others? Do they stem from kindness or desire? Are my thoughts serving my heart? Do they connect me with life or separate me from it? We can try saying out loud, No, I will not follow this negative thought. I call on my inner resources to resist it. Faced with such determination, thoughts tend to dissipate and reveal their impermanent nature. As we begin a meditation practice, it's hard to resist the endless thoughts that come pouring through our mind, especially if there is a pleasant or unpleasant drama involved. Such ideas seem sticky because we so quickly become attached to them and forget to return to the less exciting focus of the breath. Once we become aware of our thinking processes, we can practice watching thoughts arise moving like a cloud across the mind's spaciousness and passing us by. We learn that we have a choice about whether or not to engage in thoughts. In the second stage of developing right thoughts, we do not attempt to stop thinking, but try to re-encounter or let go of habitual, inappropriate thoughts that do not support our well-being. Because we spend hours lost in thoughts about grasping what feels pleasant or escaping what is unpleasant, we tend to miss the real pleasure in the very moment. Freeing an idea from sensual desires does not mean suppressing them or pretending that they are not there. We can acknowledge sensual desires and consciously release our grasp. In the third stage of right thoughts, we can cultivate joy, appreciation, and gratitude by praying or by focusing on counting our blessings and appreciating the qualities of those we love. Right thought teaches us to view things with a calm mind, a mind that is in the moment and not carrying the past's baggage. The right speech. 
The right speech, also called wise speech or virtuous speech, gives rise to peace and happiness in oneself and others. Right speech can be defined by one, not telling lies, two, refraining from talk that may bring about hatred, disunity, and disharmony among individuals or groups of people, three, retaining from harsh, rude, impolite, malicious, and abusive language, and four, retaining from idle, useless, and foolish babble and gossip. When one abstains from these forms of wrong and harmful speech, one naturally has to speak the truth, has to use words that are friendly and benevolent, pleasant and gentle, meaningful and useful. One should not speak carelessly. Speech should be at the right time and place. If one cannot say something useful, one should keep noble silence. Right speech is a mindfulness practice. By undertaking this practice, we commit to greater awareness in our body, mind, and emotions. Mindfulness makes it possible to recognize what we are about to say before we say it, and thus offers us the freedom to choose when we speak, what to say, and how to say it. With mindfulness, we see that the heart is in the ground from which our speech grows. We learn to restrain our speech in moments of anger, hostility, or confusion, and over time, to train the heart to more frequently incline towards wholesome states such as love, kindness, and empathy. The right action. Right action is not killing, not stealing, not misusing sex, not lying, not abusing intoxicants. Right action is about right morality. It is right in the sense of being upright, the way a ship rights itself when battered by a wave. The right livelihood. Right livelihood means one should abstain from making one's living through a profession that brings harm to others, such as trading in arms and lethal weapons, intoxicating drinks or poisons, killing animals, etc and should live by a profession that is honorable, blameless, and innocent of harm to others. One can see here that Buddhism is strongly opposed to any kind of war when it lays down that trade in arms and lethal weapons is an evil and unjust means of livelihood. If we are embarking on a spiritual path, we need to live our lives ethically, and this means ensuring that we do as little harm as possible to anyone or anything while we're earning our daily bread. If we have a good job and yet refuse to think about where our food comes from, where the plastic goes, and so on, our spiritual practice will be undertaken with eyes wide shut. The right effort. The right effort means keeping a positive attitude and approaching tasks with enthusiasm and cheerful determination. We must avoid becoming too intense in our work and also avoid slacking off. It also means avoiding unwholesomeness thoughts. It is the right action for the mind. The right mindfulness. The right mindfulness traditionally is the seventh part of the Noble Eightfold Path but that doesn't mean it is the seventh in importance. What is mindfulness? The Pali word for mindfulness is sati, which means retention, recollection, or alertness. Mindfulness is a whole body and mind awareness of the present moment. To be mindful is to be fully present, not lost in daydreams, anticipation, indulgences, or worry. Being fully mindful means being fully attentive to everything as it is, not filtering everything through our subjective opinions. Meditation plays a big part in developing right mindfulness. Four Frames of Reference The Buddha said that there are four frames of reference in mindfulness, which are mindfulness of body, mindfulness of feelings or sensations, mindfulness of mind or mental processes, and mindfulness of mental objects or qualities. Right concentration. Right concentration is the eight part of the path. The Pali word translated into English as concentration is samadhi. Samadhi 
is the state of consciousness that lies beyond waking, dreaming, or deep sleep. It's a slowing down of our mental activity through wholesome, single-pointed concentration. We covered the Eightfold Path, and now we will proceed to the three universal truths. One, everything in life is impermanent and always changing. Two, because nothing is permanent, a life based on possessing things or persons doesn't make you happy. Three, there is no eternal unchanging soul, and self is just a collection of changing characteristics or attributes.